many people have asked me about uh, what insulin resistance means, what is it, and I think the best uh, description of insulin resistance is to think about it as a car engine that's out of tune. If the engine needs a tune-up, you can probably keep up with the rest of the traffic by uh, pushing on the gas pedal a little bit harder. So it takes a little bit more gas to keep up with the rest of the traffic. Insulin resistance is similar to that because it takes a little bit more insulin for your body to keep your blood sugars normal. And why does that happen? Well, we're not really sure why automobile engines get out of tune, but insulin resistance appears to be related to deposition of fat inside muscle cells. Most of the sugar is cleared from the body by muscle cells and as you increase uh, your cholesterol and triglycerides um, by eating carbohydrates and in particular uh, foods that have high fructose corn syrup, you're going to see an increased deposition of fat inside those muscle cells and the muscles are going to have a harder time clearing sugar from the uh, bloodstream. As a result, there's more insulin. Now, just in the automobile engine that's out of tune, there's more gasoline. It doesn't burn efficiently, so there's a lot more pollution. And the same with insulin resistance. The higher insulin levels um, bring about an increased storage of cholesterol, fat, and uh, storage of calories as glycogen in the liver. We see an increased incidence of fatty liver. The elevated insulin levels uh, increase the production of male hormones by the um, ovary and can lead to uh, blood pressure problems, weight gain, and such. So uh, excessive insulin, uh, because of insulin resistance, can create just as much problems as diabetes can later in life, many years before uh, diabetes is possible. Now with medications, diet, and exercise, uh, we can often give uh, the body kind of a tune-up so that you don't ultimately run out of gas too soon. When you run out of gas, you're no longer able to keep up with the traffic flow. And no matter how much you floor the engine, it's just not going to keep up and you're going to be at a standstill. Insulin resistance is similar. If you continually ask the pancreas to put out more and more insulin, to keep blood sugars in check, eventually the pancreas is going to run out of oomph, the beta cells in the pancreas will die off, and you won't be able to keep up with traffic and your blood sugars are going to rise. And about a third of the people with insulin resistance go on in later life to have uh, type 2 diabetes. So that's controlled by diet, exercise, and insulin sensitizing medications. The diet we recommend is a low glycemic diet, more complex carbohydrates, um, cutting down on trans fats, increasing omega-3 fats in the diet, more whole grains, and limiting uh, the portions of carbohydrates uh, that you eat. Um, in particular, a carbohydrate size should be no bigger than the palm of your hand and no thicker with that. I don't know if you're anything like me, uh, when you see that pasta serving or ravioli or a good piece of cake, you're going to go for it. But that's probably a larger serving than we need to think about. The other thing is mashed potatoes. Potatoes are nothing more than sugar molecules one after another linked together. And by the time that sugar uh, or starch hits the stomach, it's turned into um, carbohydrates or sugar and can elevate your insulin level. So uh, potatoes... Uh, processed carbs are probably not the kind of thing that you want to uh, eat. Um, any fruit juices that have high fructose corn syrup are also a concern with this diet. Now, diet alone is not the issue, and it must be combined with exercise. About 20 to 30 minutes of aerobic exercise three to four times a week is going to increase insulin sensitivity by 20 to 30 percent, and the benefit of a good workout can last um, two to three days. So um, if you don't have a dog, go out and get a dog, a big dog. Uh, my dog uh, will walk me most of the time and keep me going. So um, just get some exercise. 
that's going to help as well. And then the third component to this is uh, an insulin sensitizer. For most people, metformin is a good option. Metformin, uh, the generic metformin is quite inexpensive. You can get it for uh, $4 a month or $10 for a three-month supply. And uh, the keys to this are to begin this medicine gradually, take it with a meal, and uh, not on an empty stomach. If you are still eating carbs and not following the diet, you're going to have more GI distress. We usually have people start at a low dose of about 500 milligrams once a day, and after about a week or so, if their stomach is able to tolerate the medicine, it's increased to twice a day. Then, um, after another week or so, it's increased to three times a day. After people are tolerating 500 milligrams three times a day, we'll cut back to 850 milligrams uh, just twice a day, increasing the dose, but going to twice a day, because if you're like me, t remembering to take a medicine three times a day is just too difficult. So um, you're on the medication, and uh, we want to see how that works. Uh, we monitor this mostly with the basal body temperature chart for those people who are wanting to conceive. At the end of two or three months, I'll review the basal body temperature chart, and if hormone studies have been normalized, we can add in an ovulation medicine if the menstrual periods are not yet regular. Now, for the woman who uh, doesn't want to lose weight or has, uh, is very lean, then a medicine like Actos may be a better choice uh, because there's far less GI side effects. Uh, metformin is going to have less of an effect on losing weight and will redistribute fat from the uh, abdominal cavity to subcutaneous where it has less uh, adverse metabolic effect. So all those three, uh, three steps, the diet, exercise, and medication, are the mainstay of managing insulin resistance and PCOS. Now for the woman with who is overweight, has a large neck size, snores, and is always feeling fatigued, we're often concerned about the possibility of uh, sleep apnea. Sleep apnea occurs when you're sleeping, or when you're not sleeping, you stop breathing. As a result, the body reacts by increasing stress hormones, catecholamines, which can increase, increase blood pressure, and then also cortisol, which can increase insulin resistant. So if you're having problems with blood pressure and cholesterol is abnormal and you're always feeling fatigued and you're overweight, ask your doctor whether sleep apnea is an issue and whether a sleep study may be helpful at pinpointing some of the problems that you have. Um, thanks for listening as I ran on here. If you want more information about PCOS, please visit our website, www.ivf.com, and look for the section on PCOS. Also, you can find out more about GRS on Facebook at facebook.com slash grsivf. Thanks a lot.